Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab covering frequency domain analysis for data converters. Precision Labs is a comprehensive online curriculum for analog engineers. More videos can be found by going to ti.com slash precision labs. This video introduces the concept of frequency domain aliasing. The alias is an error source that we want to avoid or minimize. This video also covers how an anti-aliasing filter can be used to minimize aliasing errors. In a very general sense, aliasing is an error signal that is detected when the sampling system cannot sample fast enough to properly monitor the system. You may have noticed when looking at the spokes of a spinning wheel, it appears that the wheel is moving very slowly or even backwards when you know it's moving forwards very quickly. This optical illusion happens because your eye is a sampling system that cannot perceive the rapid forward spinning motion. Your eye is seeing an alias signal. Here, we introduce the concept of aliasing for data converters in both the time domain and frequency domain. On the left hand side, you see time domain aliasing. The input signal is a 900 kHz sine wave shown in red. The data converter is sampling at 1 megasample per second, so each dot on the red curve represents a sample of the input signal. Connecting the dots for each input sample shows the blue alias signal. The point is that looking at the sample data, it appears that we have a completely different signal at 100 kHz. This erroneous signal is called an alias. For data converters, you will get an alias signal whenever the input signal exceeds one half the sampling rate. This frequency limitation is called the Nyquist rate and can be thought of as the speed limit for the data converter. Exceeding the, the Nyquist right rate of the will always result shows in an alias aliasing signal. in the frequency domain. So care must this be taken to ensure that the input the signal is band the limited sampling rate to is less than the Nyquist rate when the input is 900 kHz. Since 900 kHz is above the Nyquist rate, it will produce an alias. The alias signal will appear in the signal band at the sampling frequency minus the input signal. That is, F alias equals FS minus FN, or 1 MHz minus 900 kHz, which is equal to 100 kHz. Remember the 100 kHz alias is an error as the actual input signal is at 900 kHz. The process of aliasing is sometimes called folding back or mirroring of the input signal. Here is an example of a data converter with a sampling frequency of 1 megasample per second, so the Nyquist frequency is 0.5 MHz. For this example, a 3 volt signal is applied at 0.25 MHz, and a 1 volt noise signal is applied at 2.6 MHz. The signal at 0.25 MHz is within the Nyquist band, and the signal at 2.6 MHz is far beyond the Nyquist frequency and will generate aliases. Remember, FFT results repeat each other in increments equal to the sampling rate. So for this example, the frequency domain pattern will repeat itself every 1 MHz. Also remember that the frequency domain is symmetrical around the Nyquist frequency. So the desired signal appears at 0.75 MHz, which is calculated as 0.25 MHz plus the sampling rate. This repeats itself every 1 MHz increment. The noise signal will be symmetrical about 2.5 MHz and repeat itself every 1 MHz increment. Here we show the same example from the previous slide. The point is that in most cases, everything above the Nyquist frequency is hidden as it is redundant information. So in this example, we show everything from 0 Hz to 0.5 MHz because the Nyquist frequency is 0.5 MHz. The frequency at 0.25 MHz is the desired signal, and the frequency at 0.4 MHz is an alias. Ideally, we want to avoid any aliasing into the Nyquist band. The main way to do this is to use an anti-aliasing filter. The best way to avoid aliases is to use an anti-aliasing filter. 
The objective of this filter is to assure that any input signal above the Nyquist rate is significantly attenuated so that it does not show up as an alias signal. In this example, the desired input signal is at 2 kHz, and a noise signal is at 700 kHz. The sampling rate is 1 megasample per second for this example, so the 700 kHz noise signal will create an alias signal. An anti-aliasing filter is introduced to pass the desired signal and significantly attenuate the noise signal. This example is a second-order filter, so the attenuation is 40 dB per decade. The cutoff for the filter is 10 kHz, which allows the input signal to pass and attenuates the noise signal by about negative 70 dB. After the filter, you can see that the noise signal has been attenuated significantly. The attenuated noise signal will still alias into the signal band for the converter, but it will ideally be below the noise floor so it will not be visible. This slide shows a typical SAR input design with an anti-aliasing filter. In this case, a second-order active filter is used. The cutoff for this filter is set to 8.6 kHz, so signals above the Nyquist frequency will be attenuated by at least 60 dB. The active filter is followed by an RC filter called a charge bucket filter. The RC filter is often mistaken for an anti-aliasing filter but it is not designed for this purpose. Looking at the cutoff frequency for a typical RC charge bucket filter, you see that the cutoff is set to 15.8 MHz. Since the Nyquist frequency is set to 500 kHz, the charge bucket filter clearly doesn't work for anti-aliasing. In the next slide, we will briefly introduce the purpose of this filter and later we will cover it in depth. This slide shows a signal source directly connected to a SAR data converter switched capacitor input. Notice that the signal source has a source impedance and that the internal switch has an associated impedance. When the sampling switch S1 closes, the internal sample and hold capacitor needs to charge to the level of the signal source. However, the signal source is not capable of quickly charging the internal capacitance because of the source resistance. Inspecting the signal, you can see that the voltage on CSH droops from the original signal level and is not accurate at the end of the sample time T sample. The charge bucket circuit is designed to provide a quick boost to help the internal sample and hold capacitor quickly settle to its final value. We will cover the operation and selection of this filter later. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.